this is exactly how these people build $100 million sales teams. What they do is they go into businesses and they will build $100 million sales teams. This has done been done multiple times. I had a company come to me and we're probably planning on doing around $10 million. So it's not as big and fancy as 100, but it's still quite a bit. And think about this. If you're going to go make a business $10 million with this exact strategy, how much do you think they might be willing to pay you? If they have good margins, they should be willing to pay you quite a bit. And also if it adds a lot of enterprise value, which means that they can sell their business for more, there's a good chance that they really should be hiring you to do this. There's two, two books that I'm gonna recommend. Uh, there's actually three in total, but two for, for the uh, formula. And by the end of it, you're gonna have a great understanding of how you can walk into a business and make just about as, many, as much money as you want by offering to set up this sales system. I guarantee you anyone, if you offered this to someone who didn't have this already, they would be stupid to say no to you wanting to set this up. And really, if you want to understand, go go read those books. Um, first book is Predictable Revenue. Predictable Revenue is by Aaron Ross. It's how he added on a million dollars onto salesforce.com, and he kind of goes through the whole process. Very good book. And then also the Sales Acceleration for, Formula by Ro, Mark Roberge. I believe he was working with, um, it's the yellow, it's the orange CRM HubSpot, and I think he added on $100 million. Well, that's what he said, $100 million there. Um, and the new model of selling, if, you, if you're not really sure how to sell, Jeremy Miner's really good at it. So... All right, so that's how that's how to build. Um, this is kind of go on, and it'll also it'll understand who you're wanting to do this offer for. You don't want to do this offer for everyone because some people don't have a good product, and that's fine. Find a company with a great offer. So, um, an offer is you have to have a couple of good things in offer. I'd read a hundred million dollar offers. It's probably a pretty good book to understand it. I wouldn't follow everything in the book, but I would definitely give you a good understanding of what a good offer is. It's in a rising market, so the market's getting bigger. And also their companies ideally growing as well so that you can be a part of that growth. And then also if they have an inbound sales, if they have inbound leads, great. Try to figure out a way to work in there if they are generating leads and they're not doing a very good job at it. Say, hey, I can come in and do a better job at this. Or say um, if they don't have any and they're still making sales by word of mouth, then they probably have a really good offer. And then you can go set up an outbound team for them because they already have that word of mouth and branding that would be really good for them. Um, don't sell anything without a good offer. If you don't, if it's not a good offer, if it's not already selling, don't bother selling it because if you have two salesmen and they both are spending time selling something, but one of us is a really good offer and one has a really garbage offer, the garbage offer, he's having to push a boulder uphill. It's an exercise in futility. It doesn't matter. So if you have a better offer, your sales are going to come easier. You're going to make more money. That's just how it works. So don't sell anything that doesn't has what doesn't have a good offer. And if you're not good at sales, then get volume. The best way to get volume really quickly is to sell for something that is generally less expensive so you can get more reps in. So for example, if I was selling fitness on the phone for like three, 500 bucks, whatever, whatever it may be, that's a way that you could get a lot of volume and you could have multiple calls a day and then you could have, by the end of the day, you could have 10 sales calls, 10 sales calls. By in one month, you could have over 100 sales calls and you would be able to have a good idea of what a sales conversation looks like, what pain points are, and ultimately it boils down to five questions, which I'll, I have a link, a video to uh, in the description that you can go watch and see the, the only five questions that you need to answer um, during a sales conversation. So that's kind of how that would look like. I would find a product. Um, that's how to get volume so you can get better at sales so that you can, instead of being an outbound setter, you can be a, a closer, which they generally get paid more. And you'll see more later on the video about that. So um, find a product that people can pay at least $1,500 per close to make enough money. These are just rough estimates, of course. The dollar is going to change and the market's going to change. So I'm sure that that's going to change. But the, the, the principle remains the same. And this is a picture from Crunchbase. I believe that they also do some sort of outbound sales. I don't know exactly, but this is a, a good metric that I was like, this is a pretty decent metric for outbound sales so that you get a realistic view of what it could be for outbound sales. Now, this is um, only 70 calls per day. You, There are ways to get more calls per day. For example, if you're using close.io or maybe it's close.com, you can have something called a predictive dialer and you can get 300 calls in a day. And it just really depends on how you're able to, like a predictive dial dials five numbers at once instead of just one. So, I mean, that's that's kind of a cool way to, to, uh, to do that. Now, if you're just dialing one at a time, that's totally cool. Just know you're gonna get less bang for your buck when it comes to how much time you're putting in or how much time your setters are putting in, except for close.io is like, I think, 800 bucks per a month or whatever if you're getting all the add-ons so you can expect a 3.4 percent conversion rate to actual meaningful conversations so that may be 2.4 per day that you're going to start a conversation with 2.4 conversations and then 25 percent of those are going to end up booking to a meeting so that's three meetings per week it's 0.6 per day these are rough numbers but this gives you a good idea and then we'll get into the numbers later what that actually means for you money wise um, and then tailored emails, you could do that as well. These are strategies that you could do together or you could do independently. It just depends. I probably would have two different people on it because the way to send cold emails and the way to call are a little bit different. It's generally a combination of both. Just know your call volume might go down. Um, 
and you're you might just go in in between of like emails and uh, you could send emails one week and then the next week just call the people uh, that's kind of how you could hey i i, I sent you an email that's a good foot in the door if you're calling people you're generally going to see a 1.1 percent conversion rate if you have a predictive dialer or if you have like kixie as an example i heard that from a guy taylor welsh uh, i think he's doing well over 100 million and also jeremy minor at seventh level they both suggested kixie in a in a very very uh, behind the scenes setting that's what they, they suggested it um and that's three meetings per month in order to get um that, that's kind of how what you might be able to see with tailored emails emails are just gonna have a lower conversion rate than phone calls that's just kind of how it goes that's a total of 15 meetings per month and you're gonna have some attrition there so that actually show because not everyone's going to show up it, depending on how you get someone to show up to a call and that's 12 meetings per um per month Per person, roughly. Um, now, if that's outbound sales, outbound is kind of tough though. Instead of outbound, you can actually try inbound and know if you can generate your own leads through social media or paid ads. That's that's what you could do. Um, the most scalable, it's the most scalable. It also requires more experience and more skills that you could also partner with someone. So let's say you know someone who's like really good at ads. You could ask them, hey, I would like to um, do some stuff with sales. I needed more leads. Can you help me out with this? I'm looking to partner with this company. This is what I'm looking to do. Can you be a part of this? And if they're, if they're good at what they do, they might want to be a part of it. If not, then, you know, they might not. And that's totally cool too. But th there's, um, I would, I prefer paid ads cause you can scale it up a little bit quicker, but at the same time, you could also just try setters. I like setters as well cause both work. So these are the actual hard numbers of shows you how much you could make if you're deciding to set this up for someone else. So if you're the closer, you can comfortably manage at least four. You could do five. I maybe wouldn't suggest that. It's a little bit much if you're doing you're doing work and you're also managing setters. It's a, it's kind of a full time job, but you got to be working hard. Anyone who tells you you can work two hours a week and just do nothing is like they're selling you a pipe dream and it's a lie. You just sometimes you got to work hard. Sometimes you can take it easy, but sometimes there are seasons of working hard. This is going to be your season of working hard, and it'll pay off though. So you're going to be a closer and you're going to work for, you're going to have setters working under you, setting appointments for you. A good closer can manage somewhere around maybe five conversations plus per a day, um, five actual sales calls. They can manage more in, in um, uh, initial appointment volume. So let's say your initial appointment's 30 minutes, then you can manage at least 10 of those. You know, you could roll in every and you're going to have, oh, someone doesn't show up for a meeting. Guess what? Now you're a setter as well. So you better get used to it. That's just how it works. Don't think that just because someone shows up, that you can that you can just slack off. You actually have to work. So roughly that's 12 meetings per setter per month. That's if you find and recruit four people who are willing to do this on commission only. Their commission should be somewhere around $500. Your commission should be somewhere around $1,000 per close. Their commission should be $500 per close. That's assuming you're selling something worth $10,000 and you're getting 10% commission and they're getting 5% commission. That's a super fair commission for what they're doing. If the company can't afford it, probably wouldn't sell it for them. This is not gonna work for, for, for things that are under $10,000. It works, you know, it can, it can even work if you have a cheaper product, like we have some cheaper products, but then I'm also doing everything myself. So it becomes a little bit easier um, in, in one of the businesses. So that's about 48 meetings per month and roughly at a 35% close rate, just so you know, if you're not having a 35% close rate, any more than a 35% close rate, rate, there's a good chance you're leaving money on the table and any less than that, then you probably need to work on your sales or lower your price, but you have an honest conversation with yourself. I talk to a lot of sales reps who are like, Oh, you know, I'm really good at sales or a lot of companies who are like, I'm really good at sales. And really they're not very good. So you have to have that honest conversation with yourself. And I don't know what that looks like because obviously I've had that conversation with myself where at one point I was like, not really good at sales. And then I invested tens of thousands of dollars into my education and to actually learning how to get sales. And I started getting really good at sales. And now I shoot for 35%, anything lower than that. It's not a good sales, not a good, not a good price point. Um, and then of course I practice and train every single week on sales as much as possible, as much as realistically possible as that's my job currently. When I move out of that, it'll look a little bit differently. You probably won't be training as much because I'll have different focuses. So that's 17 closes per month. You have the potential at a 35% close rate with roughly 50 meetings per month to have $17,000 incoming for just the closer. So $17,000 per closer, $500 per a setter per close. So that's a pretty good deal as long as you have the right numbers and the volume behind it. But you're not going to find just anyone. You have to motivate. You have to be willing to motivate people to make those dials and to have this offer. It's going to be grinding day in and day out, and you have to act as a team. So that's exactly how I would do it if I were to approach him. Like I said, we had a company come to us, and we are going to do this for their company, and it probably is going to add on about $10 million onto their business, and I'm super excited to do it. So if you have any questions, I'd love to, I'd love to answer your questions. Go ahead and answer, answer any, ask any questions in the comment. Um, I'll happy to answer them and, um, yeah, goodbye.